Nowhere Else to Go, Chapter 2, A Miraculous Ladybug Fan Fiction. If you didn't see Part 1 yet, you'll find a link in the description box, or you can click on the card in the upper right corner for the playlist. Enjoy the story! Marinette awoke to the sound of Tiki's high-pitched voice. Marinette, wake up! She rolled over, snuggling into her cat body pillow, clutching at the last strains of sleep. A sharp pinch to her cheek cut through her drowsiness. Her eyes snapped open. Ow! Marinette, you slept through your alarms. You're going to be late. At that moment, Marinette recalled Cat Noir's arrival last night and shot up in panic. Shh! She hushed Tiki and crawled over to the ladder to peer over the edge of the bed. It's okay, he left already. Tiki squeaked. Oh. Marinette breathed a sigh of relief. Anyway, she was up now, so she smoothed her hair and swung her legs over to climb down the ladder. She felt bad that Tiki would have to lie low at home. I'm sorry you have to hide, Tiki. I just couldn't say no to him. I'm used to it, Marinette. During the Inquisition, we Kwamis were seen as signs of witchcraft, and my ladybug didn't have a room to herself. I had to hide all the time. Wow, Tiki, I keep forgetting you lived through times like that. Marinette threw on her clothes for the day and checked her phone. It was earlier than she expected, actually. She wasn't really late. But like a second mom, Tiki liked to make sure that Marinette had time for breakfast before school. Marinette was grateful for such a responsible little friend. Besides, she had intended to ask her parents about Cat Noir as soon as possible, rather than waiting for an awkward situation when his belongings were discovered, and breakfast seemed as good a time as any. Cat Noir had opened the curtain to his makeshift room and tucked it into the ladder, showing that he was absent and that Marinette was welcome to come inside and use her things. The bedsheets were carefully folded on the chaise long, and the duffel bag he had brought was zipped and neatly stowed under Marinette's desk. The bag was reassuring, evidence that he was coming back. Marinette was glad he hadn't second-guessed his decision to stay. She noticed a post-it note on her computer that she hadn't remembered placing there and came closer to read it. It was a note from Cat Noir. Marinette, thank you for hosting me last night. If you don't mind me intruding on your hospitality a little longer, I'll be back tonight. It was signed with a little paw print. She guessed he must have school, too. Thinking about Cat Noir's civilian activities was strange. If she had known he'd be out so early, she would have tried to wake up earlier so she could finish her homework. Oh well. Marinette, come down for breakfast before you go. Sabine's voice floated up to the attic. Marinette checked that she had everything, shouldered her bag, and came down the stairs. It was time to face her parents. Why can't he go home? I don't know. Is he in danger? I don't know. Possibly. How long does he need to stay? I don't know. Tom had left the bakery in the capable hands of the hired cashier temporarily for this flash meeting concerning Cat Noir. The disapproving look on Tom and Sabine's faces made it clear that they weren't happy with the situation, but Marinette knew her parents. They were always willing to help someone out, and they were staunch supporters of Paris' superheroes. She knew they wouldn't refuse. Please, Maman, Papa, no one will know he's staying with us. He said he doesn't have anywhere to go. What about his parents? I don't know the situation. You don't seem to know much about him, Tom observed. Marinette shrugged. The whole secret identity thing. I'm sure he would tell us more if he could. Sabine's eyes softened and she patted Marinette's arm. Sweetie, we want to help him, but he's just a teenage boy, isn't he? We're a bit concerned about what's happening to him. I know, Mama. Me too. If there's a dangerous situation at home, I'd feel more comfortable if you went to the police or social services. We can go with him if that would help. No, I don't think... That's right, Marinette. We may not be helping him by letting him stay here. 
there must be a reason he came here instead of going to the police. Tom and Sabine looked skeptical. Please, Mama, Papa, he looked so upset and I already told him he could stay, Marinette pleaded. He's a superhero and there's more at stake than just his safety. I mean, his safety is important, but there's Paris's safety and his identity to protect and we don't know what's going on. Can we just trust him and let him stay until he figures things out? Tom and Sabine looked at each other, and a series of expressions flickered over their faces, their form of silent communication. Turning back to Marinette, Tom nodded, and Sabine smiled gently, saying, Okay, he can stay. Marinette hugged her parents tightly. You're the best parents ever! Let him know he's welcome to use anything in the house. Marinette showed them the room she had made for him, and they reluctantly agreed to let him stay there since it afforded him more needed privacy than the living room couch. No shenanigans, okay? Sabine warned, and Marinette shot her a horrified look. Mama! Cat Noir didn't come back right away after school. When a few hours passed and he still hadn't returned, Marinette contemplated transforming to look for him and see if he was in trouble. She was worried. She didn't know what had gotten him so spooked last night or why he had run away from home, and the uncertainty put her even more on edge. From his conversation with Plague, it seemed like he was actually in danger, rather than this just being some family feud. What could it be? Should Ladybug know about this potential danger? She wanted to interrogate him, but would have to wait for him to speak with her first. As a civilian, she had no right to pry into his affairs, and Ladybug wasn't supposed to know anything yet. For now, though, she dismissed the thought of transforming. Cat Noir didn't have a key yet, and in a fit of overprotective paranoia, her father had installed new, reinforced locks on all the windows and doors to prevent anyone from breaking in. She wanted to be here when he returned, so he wouldn't be stranded and vulnerable outside. The hours ticked by slowly. Anxiety and fear of the unknown were eating her alive. She went on to the lady blog to see if there was any update about him. The headline of the latest article caught her eye. Cat on the prowl? It was about Cat Noir. She scanned the article quickly. Apparently, he had been glimpsed all around Paris for the past few hours, which was not normal when there wasn't an Akuma on the loose. The article was accompanied by a few blurry pictures taken by mobile phones. He was clearly trying to be subtle, but Paris's citizens prized candid shots of Ladybug and Cat Noir like rare Pokemon cards and were always on the lookout. He's patrolling? They had discussed the idea of regular patrols, but with busy personal schedules, they had decided against it. There was already a good alert system in place for when an Akuma was sighted, and they didn't need to get involved with normal crimes that the police force was already skilled at handling. So why was Cat Noir patrolling? Marinette hoped it wasn't because he felt uncomfortable coming back to her home. Feeling troubled, she made some preparations, wanting to make it clear to him that he was welcomed and that he didn't have to be shy. She took a bath towel and washcloth from the linen closet, and gathered a spare toothbrush and toothpaste from her parents' room. She drew a quick map of where the bathroom and laundry room were, and added a note. You can use them any time! She laid the items on the chaise long along with the spare key to the back door, and another post-it note with a cheerful character and speech bubble. Make yourself at home! It was almost midnight when Marinette heard the knock on her trap door. She had been reading in bed and immediately got up to open the door. Cat Noir dropped down onto her bed. I know you said to use the back door, he explained apologetically, but I don't have a key yet, and I didn't know if your parents knew about me. They do, Marinette assured him. I spoke with them today, and they're fine with you staying. My mom said you're welcome to use anything in the house, so if you want to wash your clothes or anything, you can use the laundry room. I drew you a map. Thanks, Cat Noir said with a crooked smile. Marinette was hoping he'd feel better with the passage of time, but he clearly still wasn't his normal, cheerful self. I saw on the lady blog that you were patrolling, Marinette said softly. Is Paris in danger? 
She didn't want to pressure him, but she felt obligated to be in on whatever was happening. She tried to keep her question general. Not any more than usual, I think, Katnoor answered noncommittally. She gave him a long look. If only she could be fully honest with him. She wanted to just ask him directly. She could sense that the reason for his patrol was not only because he felt shy to accept the Dupan Chang's hospitality. His jaw was set and his expression firm with a sense of duty. But he didn't see her as a partner with whom he would share information and explain his thought process. She would have to settle with playing the role of a kind supporter. Cat Noir climbed down her ladder silently and she followed him. I put a few things on your bed, she said. Let me know if you need anything else. Let's be like family, okay? He whirled around and stared at her. Family? He repeated. Marinette's smile faltered, realizing her mistake. If something was wrong at home, family was probably a sensitive topic. I'm sorry, I just meant... She trailed off. Cat Noir was looking in her direction, but he seemed to be looking through her with a haunted expression. Marinette's insides twisted at the thought that he was being forced to bear the burden of whatever it was alone. Cat Noir? She noticed his expression quiver, as if he were trying to control himself. Marinette felt helpless against the darkness that clung to him. She didn't understand his pain and didn't know how to comfort him. It seemed like her words would be futile, so she tried another way. She stepped toward him and held out her hands hesitantly. He bowed his head and moved closer to her, accepting the invitation, and she took him in her arms. He broke down. His whole body shaking in silent sobs, he collapsed in her embrace. She silently rubbed his back until the tears subsided and he pulled away, sniffling and rubbing his eyes. Picking up the bath items she had laid out for him, without acknowledging the grief he had shown, he numbly asked where the bathroom was. Silently, she led him there, one hand on his back. He let himself be led by her, like an empty shell, ears and tail drooping. Marinette went back to her bed and lay awake, listening to the sound of the shower, then hearing his quiet footsteps padding back into the room. She guessed it was part of the Miraculous's powers to make what looked like metal boots sound like the soft footsteps of a cat. He quietly said, Claws in. And Marinette heard his Kwame scarf down a snack. Neither of them spoke, but Marinette heard him rearranging the bedsheets on the chaise long. Are you comfortable enough? She asked quietly into the darkness. Of course. Thank you, Marinette, he answered. His voice was flat and polite. A dull ache started in Marinette's chest. She didn't recognize this Cat Noir, and it hurt her that he was putting distance between them, even though she understood why. To say she was worried about him was an understatement. My offer to listen still stands. Marinette reminded him. If you want to talk about anything. Thanks, he said, but that was it. The next morning, he was again gone before she awoke. Hello everyone, thank you for listening to chapter 2 of Nowhere Else to Go. What did you think? Let me know in the comments or leave a thumbs up, even a thumbs down. The next part is coming soon, so don't forget to subscribe for notifications. Until next time.